Good afternoon, residents, friends, and neighbors. And here we are again on the third Sunday of Advent. And the, today I am taping that is December 11th. So, of course, you all know that uh, we were supposed to have some snow. Lindsay and I are wondering how much. So we'll know probably by Sunday afternoon when we're recording this. So I'm glad that all of you can join us again for the service. Peace be with you. And here's a big hug for everybody out there. And uh, so we will start our service. It's very sad that I have to again mention that one of our residents has passed away. And uh, all of you know that Dora Brubaker passed away this week, quite suddenly, and it was non-COVID related. But it was, it, it was quite suddenly, and so not only was it a shock to the community, but to her husband, Bill. So if you see Bill, uh, be sure to visit with him a little. And I know that we're all recovering from that. And just know that God is with us and that our, our dear friends who pass away are with Jesus and during the Christmas season, I'd like to imagine it's a wonderful season in heaven that they are up there. Uh, the large poinsettia that you see down here is on loan to us from Mary Ann Lawrence and John Scarpino. And she brought that down this morning. She said, it's so big, I don't know where you're going to put it. And I said, well, we'll put it right here and make sure that we, we get it in there. So Judy will be doing some hymns for us again, and you should have all gotten the uh, hymn sheet in your box and that has the two songs on it remember when we sing angels we have heard on high you know i just if we had the music on here you would see that remember that gloria kind of goes on and on for a while rather than just saying gloria in excelsis deo <laughs> We're going to drag that out. So you're all familiar with that song, but I wanted to, uh, to mention that, and I wanted to thank Judy for coming down and adding these hymns to the service. I think it gives a nice adding or addition, and hopefully you're enjoying singing them in the apartment. Also want to thank Lindsay, who gives her time every time we do this for taping it. Now, the one thing that I would like to do, and Brio didn't ask me, but I want to talk a little bit about the letter that you got about the vaccination and make sure that you understand it doesn't have an exact date on it. It's uh, from Teresa and we got it on December 9th. And so it should have been in your box. And she simply says, I am writing to share some good news. Beginning in the next few weeks, senior living communities in Iowa will begin vaccinating residents and team members against the COVID-19 virus. The vaccine will likely be offered first to the community's health centers with independent and assisted living following at a later date. And then it says the Iowa Department of Health is working with CVS which is also our pharmacy provider, to create our distribution schedule. So we do not have our vaccination dates, but we likely will know them soon. The vaccination will be scheduled and administered in two parts, 21 days apart, and all vaccines will be offered here on campus. So it is good news, it's wonderful news, during the Advent season that we are going to get the vaccine. But I just wanted you to realize that it doesn't say exactly when Brio is going to get it, but it does say that we are hoping that the assisted and independent will get it at a later date following all of probably the team members and those who are working over in Elon and uh, Trestleview. So it is coming, just hold, just hold your breath and Teresa will let us know the very day that we're able to come down. So I just wanted to clear that up because I had heard several rumors we were getting it on December 14th and 
Then somebody said, oh no, the 23rd, and we don't actually have any dates, but we do know it's coming, so I think that's a wonderful thing. Today, uh, like I said, is the third Sunday of Advent where we are looking forward to the coming of the birth of Christ. And uh, our call to worship this morning, the leader said, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the congregation replied, for the Lord our God is coming to us. The leader said, tell the poor, gather the lowly. And the congregation responded, for the Lord our God is coming to us. The leader responded, the trees of the fields and all nature are awaiting eagerly this redemption of earth. God of joy and exaltation, you strengthen what is weak. You enrich the poor and give hope to those who live in fear. Look upon our needs this day. Make us grateful for the good news of salvation. And keep us faithful in your service until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives forever and ever. Also, Father, this morning we ask you to remember all of those who have lost family, friends, neighbors to this terrible, terrible disease. We are seeing some hope, which is wonderful during this season. Perhaps we are even experiencing joy, which will be our message today as we light the, the third candle of Advent, the shepherd's candle or the candle of joy. So dear Lord, we, we ask that you continue to embrace and wrap your arms around all of our workers who are working with everyone, all of our families, all of our friends and all of our neighbors. Uh, wrap your arms around Brio. We've, we've done fairly well here, Lord, and, and we know that it was your intervention and your help that has saved us here from it being a very large pandemic within our own walls and under our own roofs. So we are, we are thankful for that. We ask you to, again, be with our leaders, past and present, who are trying to do the best for our United States, and the leaders of the world who are trying to also take care of their own people, regardless of what they believe or what their religion is or their form of government. Please be with them as we try to stop this terrible pandemic which is before. In Jesus' precious name, we ask all of this and more. Amen. Now if you will turn to your hymn sheet, which I have here, and we are going to do Joy to the World. Shouts of joy, carrying their sheep. 
And our gospel reading for today is from John 1, 6-8, 19 19-28. This is John's take on the same story that we heard last week from Mark. And again, uh, they are pretty close together. Well, the wording is a little bit different, but remember I said that much of this is covered four times in the gospel. So this is his take on John the Baptist. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, No, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one you do not know. The one who is coming after me, I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptized. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Amen. Today, we light the third candle. It is the rose candle, which is also known as the shepherd's candle. And it is the candle of joy. During the third week in Advent, we spend time thinking about joy. From Psalm 511, we hear these words. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing ever, let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them so that those who love your name may exult in you. We have two purple candles going from the last two Sundays, and now we will light the third candle, the rose candle, which is also a candle of jewel. Too often we think joy is something big for oh God. A brass band or a parade can certainly bring us joy. Just as easily and far more often feel joy in a hug or the squeeze of a hand. We can see joy in a smile or hear it in laughter. Help us to not overlook the simple joys. They're peeking to our lives daily. This week in our Advent journey, open our eyes to the joy that surrounds us. Amen. Well, it, it is hard to see a smile with a mask, but look into people's eyes, and they're differently. Look at your own face in the mirror. And when you smile, your eyes seem to light up. And you can hear it in your voice. So yes, during this COVID season, we're not able to see that smile. And we're not able to see that hug. But we can still do our universal hugging. And I've passed that on to so many people that that is our universal hug for now. And we pray for the day when you will come into the church and we can hug and we can do our sign of peace and shake hands and all of those things. And that day will come, my friends. But today, in this season, look for the joy in people's eyes. Look for the laughter in their smile. And give our universal hug for now. The third candle today, which we have lit, is the candle of joy. So today, for this hour, or 45 minutes or half hour, whatever we're gonna be here. I want you to forget everything around us. I want you to forget the death of loved ones and of neighbors and friends. I want you to forget how hard it is to be living in this time 
But I want you to be joyful that we are celebrating the Christmas season. Uh, if any of you have radios, you can listen to Christmas music on a variety of channels. Television, there have been some wonderful TV specials. And if you're like Ann and I, we tape them. And then I can tape through the ones that I either don't know who they are and not really into their kind of music. But there are all kinds of wonderful, joyful things. And the um, Brio is doing a lot. We've, they've done so many decorations here. And they put up the Christmas, uh, was it 12 days, Lindsay, or four, 12 days of Christmas that we're going to have. So that'll be fun to join me in. And I heard a rumor that the fun cart may be coming around. And I think it was uh, Friday, today. So we're trying to do all kinds of joyful things and greeting neighbors in the hall and doing things like that. So let's experience some joy. Let's look into what joy is. So what is our definition of joy? Well, a positive or pleasant emotion, delight, it expresses itself in many ways into our lives. Gladness, contentment, and cheerfulness. But these are worldly definitions of joy. Not the joy described as being a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy as a fruit of the Spirit may mirror some of these things. But it goes much deeper. Even non-Christians experience joy. Not as much probably as we do, but they do have joy in their lives. But Christian's joy is an altogether different thing. It's the joy in knowing that Jesus Christ came to the earth for us, that God sent his only son to take care of our sins, that he lived a good life. Perhaps uh, it was a different life because many people didn't believe him and many people didn't follow him. But he had a good following, and of course, the end was tragic, but in a way it wasn't because his death and his resurrection guaranteed us eternal life, which we should be joyful about. And that is one of the joys that we can have. The Apostle Paul wrote many letters to the church and of the 326 occurrences of words for joy in the New Testament, 131 or 44 percent of them are found in the 10 letters written by the Apostle Paul. So Paul did like joy. But for Paul, Christianity is as much a religion of joy as it is of grace. And of course, remember that grace is only given by God and that that is a joy that we do have. Being saved by grace and reconciled with God results in the ability to, as Paul said in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Those who have experienced God's grace and stand firm in their faith can celebrate the Christian life as a festival of joy, living in freedom from all anxious worries and fears. And yes, I know that um, that's hard to do today, even if we didn't have COVID. Before COVID, there is a terrible unrest in our country and in the world with people fighting against each other for different beliefs, different religions. But we can all find joy in the world. What is one of the sources of our joy, and that would be our union with Christ. Christianity is uh, it's a religion based on the idea that the follower, as followers of Christ, we live in a personal relationship with him. That he is someone that we can go to. And again, we've talked about this, it's, it's hard because we can't see him. We maybe can see some of the miracles that he performs around us. We live in his father's creation, in God's creation. But it's hard to think that we have a personal relationship with someone we cannot see, but we do. 
Being united with Christ is one of our source, uh, sources of joy. Or in other words, where Christ and his kingdom are present, joy is present. It has been this way from the very first times Christ was present among mankind. When Mary was still pregnant with the soon-to-be-born Messiah, she went to see her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth said, As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. That would have been John the Baptist, because remember Elizabeth was pregnant with John when uh, Mary was pregnant with Jesus. And when her fetus heard that, it leaped for joy within her stomach. Now, that's a hard one to, to think about and to digest. When Jesus was born, the angel announced his arrival by saying, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. So she was saying, or the angel, I guess I always call them she, it could have been a he, so we'll just say the angel said, I bring you great tidings of joy. Then the Magi learned of Jesus' birth by seeking a star in the sky, and we are told when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Jesus' last, weeks to his last words to his followers were, and surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the source of joy in the Christian life, the presence of God everywhere and always. We need, uh, all we do is to, all we need to do is to look to the good book, the Bible, and we'll find all kinds of references to joy. And again, that joy that we are feeling is our relationship to God, the joy that knowing that Christ is among us. The Apostle Paul sums it up this way. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's you can find in Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Our union with Christ is the first and foremost thing that we need for joy. But we also find joy by living in unity with other followers of Christ. And think about it. Our congregation here in, the, in Brio. The people that we meet, the people that touch our lives. Aren't we joyful about that? I know that many of us have expressed our, our story and said, you know, I didn't think it would end up this way. I didn't think when I retired <clears throat> that our life would be like this. I didn't think I didn't know. And of course we don't. We, we don't know what tomorrow is bringing. But for some reason, those of us who are here were sent here. And we ended up here with all of our friends and making new friends and residents and our wonderful teams. And we experience joy being here. We truly do. Paul summed it up in this way also in Philippians 2, 1 through 4. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord in one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. And we that's mentioned several times in the Bible and in many readings that we have. The joy that Paul talks about as being the fruit of the Spirit is more than a positive attitude or a pleasant emotion. We can be happy for a short time. Happy in perhaps a gift that we get for Christmas or birthday. 
happy in getting that Christmas card from someone perhaps we'd forgotten or haven't been in contact with since last year. Joy, uh, happiness is a momentary thing, but joy is forever. It is a joy which rises above circumstances and focus on the very character of God. Joy in the Lord enables us to enjoy all that God has given us. We can rejoice in family, food, and fellowship. And you're saying, well, yeah, we don't have a lot of fellowship here since the COVID. But yes, we do. All you have to do is pick up your phone and call and talk to someone. Maybe there's someone you haven't seen for a while. And don't start with, how are you feeling? I was afraid you had the COVID. Perhaps, hi, this is so-and-so. I'm just calling to see what you're doing this Christmas season. And then let the conversation flow. But it's wonderful. I know that I enjoy getting a phone call. I enjoy getting a handwritten note. All of those things that are so wonderful because you know what? Someone has put some effort in that for me, just to do it for me. And it's just a joyful feeling to have all of that. This kind of joy is much different than from happiness. The kind of joy looks beyond the present to our future, our salvation, and eternal life. In Philippians 3, 17 through 41, brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. So Christian joy is grounded in hope, which was the first candle that we lit. The, we have the hope that the world can't offer to us. It's a hope that Jesus Christ, that the story is true, and that we have followed him, and that as Christians, that everything he has told us will come true. It, regardless of our, our current circumstances, and again, the circumstances are dire, but you know what? It looks like we're going to get some kind of a vaccine. And it looks like the Lord has listened to us and is going to help us. We have the hope that comes from knowing that one day we will share the glory of God and live a life of perfect joy in the world to come. If you would like to experience more of the fruit of joy in your life, how would you do this? The knowledge of God's word produces it. Read your Bible every day. I know many people say, well, I've all read it from the beginning to the end. Well, read it again. It's good reading. Or many of us have wonderful passages. Or every once in a while, maybe I'll mention something, mention something like the story of Joseph and his brothers. Those are wonderful stories. They're, they're good to reread and read over again. Worshiping God evokes joy. Obedience discovers joy and Christian service promotes and develops it. This is my wish for you during this holiday season that you too will experience joy and happiness. We all need to be happy, but that we will experience that joy that Paul says comes from the grace of God. God bless you all. Amen. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed.
Our prayer is from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the noise to the Lord, all the earth. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And now, if you will join me for the angels we have heard on high. Remember, in our chorus, we're going to extend that glory way out. And then you'll know when to say in excelsis Deo. Share the joy of Christ with all you meet. Share joy by seeing the good in each other. Share joy by remembering good times and hoping for good times to come. Share joy by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share joy. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share joy, peace, and hope with those you meet. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go with joy, serve the Lord.